Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. All right, you guys. You guys just heard that song. It is time for part three of the Takashi Six Nine breakdown. I'm telling you, today has just been a crazy day. Everybody's talking about it. He released some more testimony. So if you guys do not know, Takashi Six Nine is currently blasting Cardi B and rapper Jim Jones. Okay, so this is what went down earlier today. This is what TMZ and many others are reporting. They're saying at 10.33 a.m., Takashi testified that he offered nine Trey members 50 grand to rob and shoot at Harv after the kidnapping incident. He also testified that Jim Jones is a member of Trey 9. Prosecutors played a phone call between Jim Jones, Shoddy, and Mel Murray, in which they were all talking about getting revenge on 6 9 for snitching. They make multiple references to Takashi getting violated. After the recording was played, Takashi identified Jones as a member of the gang. Worth noting, a couple months ago, Jim Jones was on the cruise show, and you got to check out his reaction when somebody bought up 6 ix music. I'm going to go ahead and play you guys that reaction right now. Check it out. I like the few Takashi songs, my G. I wasn't uh, a not, fan. We can't, we can't. But we can't, we can't, we can't, not, we can't. Yeah, we no, not, I totally his get history it. is erased. We're not even going to say what right? we liked or, or what we, or screw uh-huh. him all the way down the board. You heard? Yeah. He did, he did some actions that he can't come back from, so his name is non-mentionable. He can't set foot in New York? I don't know what he could do. I don't give a fuck what he could do, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, that's not my job. If he did step foot in there, they pe- probably switch, should stay far away from him. Sure. You dig? Sure. I mean, we, I grew up in the era. I grew up in an era where certain things uh, you, it, you you cannot come back from. Yeah. There's no fixing that. You dig? I already know. You, you know what I mean? You black, that's what you, you black forever. You dig? Mm-hmm. You're a rat, you're a rat forever. You understand what I'm saying? It ain't no, and, and that's it. There ain't no coming back from that. So that's a subject that we don't even have to touch on. All right. So you just saw Jim Jones over there snapping and in his feelings over Takashi 6 ix music. So then they go on to write this. They're saying that during Takashi's testimony Thursday morning, he claimed he initially lied about the portions of the kidnapping, specifically that he got pistol whipped and knocked unconscious right away because he was humiliated. As the dash cam video shows, that did not happen. The rapper testified that he didn't ID the kidnappers to the police or to the media after the incident, but he did meet up with his former manager, Shoddy, and Mel Murder afterwards at his house and told them Harv and Nuke were the perps. Takashi claims that they stole 365k worth of his jewelry and some of Harv text messages were shown in which he allegedly tried to unload the stolen jewelry. There's more. A recorded prison convo with Mel and another associate was played for the jury in which Mel details the incident and says two guys, Black Boy and Hollywood, were involved. Takashi testified that Black Boy is code for Nuke and Hollywood is code for Harv. Another convo between Takashi and Shadi was played in which Shadi referenced the kidnapping and suggested that he wanted to kill Harv for it. The convo was captured by a wiretap in the van. Takashi testified that he didn't know that him and Shadi were being recorded. So that's what happened earlier today during the trial. And then Cardi B replied back because, of course, this went viral. So Cardi B's people contacted TMZ and they said that a rep for Cardi B denied the claims that she's a member of the Bloods, telling TMZ this is not true. Then Cardi B took to her Twitter page and she basically said, you just said it yourself, Brim, not Nine Trey. I've never been Nine Trey or associated with them. And then she put up like an old tweet of um, 6 9 so that was Cardi B's response, and then she took to Instagram and she played this video. Um, it's a viral video that went viral a few weeks ago, Kiki Palmer. So go ahead and check this out. I hate to say it. I hope I don't sound ridiculous. I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street. I wouldn't, I wouldn't know a thing. Sorry to this man. Now, on top of that, Karen Civil also stated this. She says Atlantic Records has denied that 6 ix claimed that Cardi B was a member of 9 Trey Gangster Blood. So it's a lot of stuff going on right now on social media, a lot of emotions. You know, a lot of people are really pissed off. Um, Jim Jones, I'm sure, is really upset that his name is being drugged into this. 
But I have to be honest with this situation. And Tigro Damas hates to say, I told y'all so. But damn it, I told y'all so. Stupid. Almost a year ago, I came out and I was basically asking the question, who co-signed this kid? Who co-signed him? He's not black. He's Mexican. He's just freely using the N-word around all these black men. They don't care. They're hanging with him. They're, you know, okay that he can use the N-word. He basically said, I'm going to keep using the word nigga. What y'all going to do about it? And everybody did nothing about it, right? So it's like he came out of nowhere. He was co-signed by all these big known gang members in Brooklyn and people in the industry. You had 50 Cent running behind him and everything else. But now that this shit is getting real, now folks are in their feelings. And I find it really funny because when I told y'all this a year ago, I said, don't y'all find it very funny that this man is using black men as shields and as bodyguards, you know what I'm saying, after he trolls and he perpetuates a bunch of fuckery, then he has these black men to come and protect him. Why is he not putting his own people at risk? Why is he not walking around with essays and vatos and everything else? You know, but when I said that, oh, I was mean, I was racist, I was a bitch, I needed to shut the hell up. But now everything I stated a year ago is coming to pass. Let me go ahead and play y'all this flashback. Go ahead and check this out. So you guys just heard me read that and you guys also saw some of the video clips. So this entire situation is crazy. You know, at this point, it's so funny that when shit gets real, everybody wants to get in their feelings and everybody's like, you know, Nikki needs to be careful. She needs to stay away from these gangsters and things like that. Kanye West needs to be careful. Um, I believe that they all know that Takashi 6 9 is involved in a lot of mess, but they were willing to take that damn chance. And this is some of the things that can happen when you're willing to take these silly chances. When you're a big caliber artist, certain artists you don't need to mix your brand with because then they can take you down in their fuck shit. This man sits online all day antagonizing other gangbangers thinking that shit's sweet. And then when things get real and shit hits the fan and there's a shooting, then all of a sudden you want to see him walking around LA with all these big burly black security guards. And like I said on Instagram, what I find really interesting is that he done hired all these big black men to protect him, okay? He done had all these big black men to protect him. Well, you know, being that he's a Mexican, why are you not hiring your cholos, your essays, and your damn vatos? Why are you not giving them jobs? It's funny that he's willing to risk these black men's lives and risk them getting shot on his behest because of all his fuck shit, but he's not willing to risk his own people's lives. Y'all notice that shit? I have no respect for this dude and the moves that he's making. You know, obviously he has not learned from the death of XXX. He claimed that after XXX was killed, he was going to change his ways and, you know, be a better person and stop trolling so much. He's just doing the same thing that he's been doing. And Nicki Minaj is very, very lucky that she was not in that room. She's very, very lucky that she was running late because like I said, she could have been hit. Honey. All right, y'all just saw that flashback. So isn't it funny that when I was pointing that out a year ago, people got mad at me, said I was being racist. How dare I question them? And what's so funny is that later on it came out that every last one of them black security guards who were running around protecting Takashi 6ix9ine, they didn't get paid a dime because he was arrested the following month and they tried to sue to get the money. And I don't think they've gotten the money till this day. So the whole situation is insane, but what's even more funny is that this is what I posted on that same video almost a year ago, okay, 10 months ago. It says, all that fake gangster shit is all fun and games until the real gangsters pull up. Shake my head. Takashi 6 9 will always bring a weird, overly hyper energy to any situation because he is the living embodiment of Pan. I wrote that 10 months ago, and I'm sure that went over a lot of people's heads. They're probably like, who the hell's Pan? Is she talking about Pan Pizza? You know what I'm saying? This dude is a court jester. This dude is an agent of chaos. He was brought here to just bring a bunch of chaotic energy, and a bunch of black men fell for it. And now these black guys are going down while he's able to sing like a canary. Do him and will nine times out of ten get out with time served. 
Meanwhile, all of these black guys who have now been, you know, basically caught up in this whole situation, they're all going to be given double digits. We see Shadi just got 15 years, okay? There's more trials to come. Now, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but once again, I have to go back to where did this kid come from? Who co-signed him? Because the, the co-signing and the rallying that I saw people giving this young Mexican kid, to me personally, just didn't make any sense. It's like there's no standards anymore in hip hop. You know, he got more acclaim and more notoriety and more fame and attention for trolling than for actually even making decent music. Now, another thing I find really funny is this. Now, granted, he didn't bring up Cardi B's name. The lawyer brought it up when they were confronting him. So what they're saying is that basically the lawyer was asking him, did he pay to have all these bloods in his video to give him street cred like Cardi B? And then that's when he was like, you know, yeah, Cardi B is a blood and everything else. But my thing is, why would Cardi B's name be even brought up in this situation? And I think the reason why they try to bring up her name in this situation is because she has an ongoing case with Takashi's new and current girlfriend, Jade, who was in the Fifi music video. And I think that they questioned him so that way they can use that information in the case that they're building with Cardi B and Jade. You know, so this whole situation is just really crazy to me. And this just goes to show you how far hip hop has fallen. And when people speak truth about situations, y'all want to cuss them out. Y'all want to call them haters. And then when things come to pass, everybody wants to be crying tattoo tears. Folks are saying that's messed up. All these black guys are getting time because of this Mexican kid. Okay, but when I was talking about these black guys, you know, putting their bodies at risk because he was starting all this shit on the West Coast with YG and real gang members out there, nobody cared about that. But now that they're handing out time like Tic Tacs, now it's an issue. And this is why people need to use their discernment and stop clout chasing. They saw a young kid with a bunch of tattoos and because he was getting fame and because he was going viral, these black men didn't think like, okay, well maybe, you know what I'm saying, it's just an act, you know, we can be in this video, but that's about it. We're not going to bring him into nothing. We're not going to let him do any dirt around us. Because again, this dude was never about that life. He was paying for protection. He was paying for an image. So for these grown black men who are in their late 30s to get that comfortable, to let some 22-year-old Mexican kid slide into their clique. These are guys who've been knowing each other since they were young. So they allowed this kid to basically infiltrate their clique. And now all these guys are getting locked up. And meanwhile, he gets to sit by, sing like a canary. and skate off into the sunset. You know, so a lot of people really need to look at this situation a lot deeper because you have to ask yourself, like I said when I started this video, who co-signed him? Where did he come from? Because it's funny that they never really could pin anything on this gang before 6 9 And then when 6 9 was able to infiltrate it, now they have all this solid evidence to just start locking all these dudes up. Y'all better wake up out here. Okay, this whole Hollywood, this whole media, social media shit, it's all a facade. Don't get fooled by the glitz and glamour of going viral in social media. Y'all better wake up. Shoddy is way too old to be sitting here at 38 years old looking at a 15-year sentence behind some bullshit. Straight up. A lot of the dirt that they were doing, they were doing because of the shit that Takashi 6 9 kicked off. I'm not saying these dudes were innocent and they weren't, you know doing stuff with guns and game banging before 6 9 but a lot of their high profile dirt was only because Takashi 6 9 got into it with other people and they were trying to basically protect their investment at the end of the day black men y'all better learn to put yourself and your families first and foremost and stop co-signing other racist fuckery people allowed 6 9 to do shit and get away with shit that they would not have allowed from any other black male rapper let's keep that all the way funky but again, when you speak the truth, you're a hater, you're a coon, you're a bet wench and everything else. I don't want to make part three too long because I know there'll be a part four tomorrow. So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation concerning Takashi 6 9 you know, steadily singing like a damn canary. 
calling out Cardi B, calling out Jim Jones, putting everything out there, and now people are just acting so shocked when all the signs were there less than a year ago. So let me know your thoughts. Make sure you guys thumbs up the video, share the video. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that way you can get the videos as soon as they drop. All right, talk to y'all later. Deuces.